I want to look at a thought under this title, if I were to pick a title. It would be God's strategy against the sinful nature. I am not able to put into words the extent of the impact of the devil's work in human hearts in the fall when he infected every human heart with an, an inclination to self-sovereignty, self-authority, self-will, this nature then causes us spontaneously to reject authority over us, to reject God's laws as well as men's laws, parents' laws, teachers' laws. It is the single most um, impactful condition in the whole world. I don't mean to be too expansive here, but it explains everything. It explains disobeying parents. It explains fighting among one another. It explains all the way up to international wars. Every invasion to steal someone else's territory, local crime, greed, fraud, slander, all of it is traceable to the sinful nature. If his parents, or as social workers, as psychologists, and so forth, if we don't take into account and aren't fully aware of that inherited, spontaneous inclination, we are therefore clueless and powerless to affect any kind of changes in people's lives and behavior. This is a deeper down and farther back problem than a human can deal with. It takes God to deal with it. But we must never, we can't dwell on it and be so negative, but we can't ever factor it out. That is the driving um, impulse behind the kinds of behaviors that we find destroying homes, churches, society, and so forth. God has a strategy, and we just want to kind of sum it up in um, several little points. The first, <clears throat> his first strategy is to curb that sinful nature in the child. He, he delegates, really, to parents the huge task of curbing that inclination through discipline, consequences for uh, bad behavior, disobedience, Yes, I am, and uh, I would say even uh, the use of the ping pong paddle. Now, any time in today's world you talk about spanking or anything like that, people's eyes roll back in their head and they fall over sideways and they faint and they gasp. And I'm not talking about abuse. I'm not talking about um, flying off the handle, beating children, but. When children grow up with um, no consequences for rebellion, they are creating a harder job for God, actually, to ever get to their children's hearts. Parents have to curb that in the child. Second, God's strategy then is to conquer it in conversion. Now, conquer means to subdue. It doesn't necessarily mean to expel or remove. You can conquer a nation, but there can still be an underground warfare going on, and it can drag on forever. God conquers the sinful nature, and he moves into our hearts by his Spirit. But that spontaneous inclination still remains. And God has a remedy for that. The first thing, though, before he can further his remedy to the conclusion, 
He's got to conquer that sinful nature in conversion. It will make itself known to the believer, and the Christian will discover inner turmoil and inner civil war, contrary desires and, and impulses, um, and God will reveal that there's a deeper work to finish off the sinful nature, to remove it. That is his third strategy, crucify it in entire sanctification. Paul clearly uses crucifixion repeatedly as an illustration of what God wants to do to that spontaneous inclination in our hearts. In fact, he testifies to himself, uh, of himself, is I am crucified under the world, and the world's crucified are dead to me. Therefore, the life I live, I don't live in my own strength. So God's strategy against this source of all the trouble we've got is curb it in the child through faithful parenting. Conquer it in a sound conversion, and then crucify it, put it to death, cleanse it, remove it in entire sanctification. This then is what we must give ourselves to, and we must pursue it until we know it's real in our hearts. Father in heaven, ultimately, this sinful nature what you call the carnal mind is the core of the problem that we have. And fortunately, by the grace of God, through the atonement of Jesus, you have a remedy for it. May we experience the full remedy that we may live in victory. In Jesus' name, amen.